have, we already supposed that this, by the inductive assumption, this is less than or equal to f of um, the expected value of x over those same k minus 1 letters. So this is f of sum from i equals 1 to k minus 1, pi over 1 minus pk, x times 1 minus pk. So this is less than or equal to this by the inductive assumption. step, um, well, what do I have? I have f of xk, pk f of xk, plus 1 minus pk times f of some other point. So therefore, by the definition of convex functions, so let's call this point uh, q. So I can rewrite this as, let me be explicit here, pk f xk plus 1 minus pk f of q, it doesn't really matter what this point is, but it's, it's some real number. So by the definition of convex functions, that's greater than or equal to f of pk xk plus 1 minus pk um, q. So basically all I've done is I've taken everything inside. Uh, once again, I'm doing the trick where if pk is lambda, then this is just the definition of convex function. And finally, let me just substitute back in for q. 1 minus pk times this. sum from i equals 1 to k minus 1, pi over 1 minus pk, x. I can cancel this with this, and I end up with f of the sum from i equals 1 to k of pk, x, which is equal to f of the expected value of x. assumption. I then did a little uh, change of variables to make it a little more clear. Then this is the definition of a convex function. And finally, what I ended up with was equal to f of the expected value of x. So we proved the base case for two elements. Then we proved the inductive case, assuming that k minus 1 elements works and k elements also works. So that's sufficient by by, uh, for a proof by induction. <coughs> okay, so we proved Jensen's inequality. Ourselves, it's been a it, we uh, we took a while proving that, so let's just remind ourselves exactly what we proved. We proved that um, the expected value of f of x is greater than or equal to f of the expected value of x. If f of x is concave. A couple of corollaries. The first one is the expected value of f of x. Excuse me. If f of x is concave, not convex.
then, actually, what do you think would happen here if it's concave? Pardon me? Direction of the inequality. Direction of the inequality changes. So what's different if it's convex than intermediate points? Expected value of f of x is along this line, and all the function points are here. So therefore, uh, for a convex function, everything's below the line. So therefore, the function is less than the expectation. If it's concave, the function is always above the expectation. So therefore, this inequality flips. Because this is true, what does log of x look like? If I plot log of x uh, for positive values of x, basically it looks like that. Is that concave or convex? Second corollary. Corollary two. If f of x is equal to log x, then the expected value of log x is less than or equal to log of the expected value of x. So we can see that here. Let's draw the connecting lines. Here's log x1, log x2, expected value of the logs lies along that line, whereas the value of logs always lies above that expectation like so. Okay, finally. Now we know enough that we can actually prove that relative entity is positive. 